Welcome to the Carl Watts Daily Lesson Live number 10. Yes, we're at the end of the second week. And as we always say, remember you're only one tip away. So the whole point of these, these types of tips, especially these Daily Lesson Lives, is about giving uh, tips that you can take straight onto the course and implement straight into your game. Now, as always, I'd like to start off with my stat of the day and just like to find out uh, how much you understand about the game and how it can influence your decision making on the course, for instance, and if you like, uh, your confidence on the course, your ability to take on shots and so on. So my stat of the day is this, very simple. Um, what is the average number of holes it takes for a PGA Tour Pro to get an eagle? Okay, so how many holes, I don't know why I'm looking at the board, I'm not even writing anything, but how many holes do they play before they get an eagle on average? Now, I tend to ask this question uh, a lot uh, to different players, and I've asked this sort of question to whether it's professionals wanting to play on the European Tour or amateurs uh, of, of all sorts of levels. Now, the general answers will be, most people probably uh, think it's sometimes 18 or 36 holes or 54 holes, for instance, but they normally guess around sort of between 18 and 27 holes is the average. Uh, now, interestingly, the average is 293 holes. Uh, so when you start to understand that, it sort of puts a different perspective on the game. So, you know, we're used to thinking that obviously they're phenomenal players, which they clearly are. But if our assessment of what is good is wrong, uh, then actually we, um, we don't allow ourselves to actually appreciate what good shots are and how well potentially some players are doing and so on. So very interesting stat. I love those talks of stats. Again, the, we, we understand the game is very much in the mind, uh, but this is a, a key understanding. It's, these guys are brilliant, but our perception of brilliant is not what we think. Okay, so today's question. Uh, on the Daily Lesson Live is from Steve from Southampton. Now, Steve plays of 24 handicap. He plays once a week and he has this question is, what would be a realistic goal for him uh, in regards to handicap in the time frame he has? He doesn't have a huge amount of time to practice. Uh, like I said, he plays of 24, he plays once a week. Now, okay, so what is realistic? Well, I like sort of pushing the boundaries a little bit on what is possible. Uh, and let me give you an example in regards to what I'm doing with uh, the Carl Watts Golf and the, uh, the, uh, the YouTube channel. Now, uh, I have, um, if you like, a bit of a goal to try and uh, try and get alongside the likes of someone like a Rick Shields or me and my golf, which have, Rick Shields has 1.68 million subscribers. It offers obviously great content, um, really is very, very good at what he does. Um, and he's got very professional at it, and but also seems a really good guy uh, alongside with it. Um, now, currently I have 138 subscribers, so I'm only 1,699,900, no, 800, and I think um, 62 away. Okay, so obviously I didn't, didn't qualify for maths uh, going way back when I was at school. However, um, that is my target. I want to somehow get to that point. Now, to, for me to be able to do that, I'm going to have to do um, some of the basics really, really well. Like, for instance, this daily live. Uh, now, obviously, this is number 10. Now, as I keep improving and keep working and, and keep doing this, even though initially I'm starting off with, with a, a few... Uh, people who are signing in and joining in and watching what I'm doing. However, if I stick to the basics and I keep doing my daily lives on the Monday to Friday, I keep doing the basics of running the social media side of things and putting interesting content out there, stuff that can help players. Obviously, over time, what would happen is, is more players will get interested, more players will join the lot, more people will join the lives and so on. So if I stick to the basics 
and I do them repeatedly and well, uh, there's, I have every chance as anyone else of to grow uh, a large number of subscribers uh, and to actually have an impact on the game, which, which these guys are having, which is very, very cool. Now, coming back to your game, as we've said, so playing off 24, what's realistic? Well, going back to basics, as in what are the core fundamentals that you would stick to, uh, are really important here. Now, what do I mean by that? So if someone like a Jack Nicholas going back, so arguably the greatest player that's ever played the game, won the most majors at 18. And for him, what he used to do at the beginning of every year is he used to go back to his coach, Jack Grout, and they used to spend a couple of weeks and he would go, right, I'm a beginner, take me back to the basics. Whenever his game went wrong, he would do the same thing. He would just go, go, take me back to the basics. Now, for you to be able to say, if you're off 24 and you wanted to get to, say, 18, or 14 or 12 or even nine handicap, what the advice I would give you is to fundamentally stick to the sheer basics. Now, what would that look like for you? So if you were looking at the main, con main parts of the game, we've got the swing, uh, which again is obviously a fundamental part of the game. But one of the key things within the swing is what I call the three quarter back, three quarter through position. Now this is just a fundamental checkpoint, which you can see if you go onto the swing checkpoint system on the YouTube channel, um, you'll be able to see what I have as checkpoint two and checkpoint eight, uh, which is the backswing three quarter position and the through swing three quarter position. Now, if you get good at that position in itself, that is the, the core fundamental move of the golf swing. And so if you understand those positions and you can replicate that, it's actually a very simple, very fluent move uh, and is at the very heart of your golf swing. So that would be the first thing I would get you to do. Fundamentally stick to the three quarter back, three quarter through position, which will then really help you. It'll keep you on track. You won't veer too far away from uh, with your swing. Now, the second part is to then be aware of ball flights to do with swing. Understand if you hit a push to the right, a straight push, what does that mean? What have you done? If you hit a pull to the left, what have you done? And what you'll see when you go onto the shape management system on the YouTube channel, um, there are several videos that explain how you hit a slice, how you hit a hook, how you hit a pull, how you hit a push, how you hit a draw or a fade, and so on. So there's eight different ball flights for you to look at and just go, do you know what? I understand why the ball would go that way. Now that is hugely helpful, just that baseline of understanding at the very beginning when you take up the game or if you are, have played for a number of years now, it's important for you to know. What I tend to see is most players are really stuck if I ask them, how do you hit a push to the right? And in reality, it's really simple to understand, but it's not if you've just not been taught it. So. All I would encourage you to do is learn actually how to play the shots you're trying to avoid. Learn the basic principles of what would be your swing path and your club face position at impact and along that path. So again, you'll learn all that on the systems that we have on the YouTube channel. Now, then we go into putting. So obviously we've looked at swing. How can we help you to develop a, a basic foundation that could mean that you could, you could set goals that may be from 24 to try and reach 12 handicap or 15 or nine handicap. We're trying to stick to the basic principles, stick to the fundamentals all the time. Now, the next one would be the three foot putt. Now, what I would encourage you to do here is to get a ball, uh, line, get a line on a ball. So if it's like so, you'll see on here, there's a line on the ball. I would encourage you to draw a line all the way around that ball and then line that up from three feet on a straight three foot putt. So three feet, hit the putt from three feet and you will see whether it rolls end over end. Now, if it does and you're, you're, the ball is going into the center of the hole, you know your basics at address are good. You know your basics of the stroke are good. What most people do, they don't practice the three foot putt, they don't use a line, and what they do is they practice longer putts, when in reality the three foot putt is going to be the one that highlights all your flaws. You'll see it far easier, and it's the easiest one to work on. You can work on the principles and adjust your stroke accordingly. 
So I would recommend the three foot part with a line and get used to holding that down the center line. And if you're missing it left, just double check your basic as an address and so on. The last one is then just to practice your basic chip and run. For me, it would be like a little five yard chip and run, which, which I know if you take the club back, two foot back, two foot through, the ball lands roughly five yards. You then have a baseline to work with with your chips. Now, if you've got those sort of frameworks and you stick to those basics, you have a good chance of moving forward. What most people tend to do and why people generally don't progress in the game is they don't have a set of fundamental basics that they stick to no matter what. And they tend to then veer off and look for quick tips, if you like, to suddenly transform a game. Some of the best tips you will ever get is to stick to the sheer fundamentals and basics of the game, to check the basics regularly, to warm up with your three foot line on the ball, to warm up with your three quarter goal swing, to warm up with your two foot, two foot little chipping action, which just gets the basics working correctly. If you do that in a warm up routine and you regularly just stick on, on, on focusing on keeping those in place, you've got a great chance of progressing. If you veer off from that and you don't work on checking that you're on line from three feet for a putt, what happens is people start to aim a little bit left. The next week they're a little bit further left. The next week they're even further left and then they're manipulating the stroke and then it just evolves over a period of time and suddenly their game is in chaos and they just can't improve. So that's what I would reckon. Great question. I really like it. And again, look, you know, with the with the Carl Watts Golf uh, YouTube channel, again, I've got 138 subscribers. Uh, I would like to help as many players as I can. I'm very determined to try and get to the tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So I've got to get good at the basics. I've got to get the good content out there. I've got to be able to help uh, do the daily lives, get good at how I present it, not use my hands so much, which is some of the feedback I have been getting to keep my videos shorter and to the point. And so all of this type of feedback is very, very good for me, but it sets a basic foundation for me, if you like, as an online golf coach to move forward with. And that's exactly what needs to happen with yourself, with your, with your game. Get the foundation and just keep on at it every time you play, um, warm up beforehand, stick to the basics, and then at home, when you've got some time, create a little, pro a little five minute practice session that just ticks it over little and often. So Steve, I hope that has helped. Yes, there's a few components to that, but if you're looking to go from 24 handicap to nine or 24 to 16, whatever your target is, it is viable, but it's gonna be down to how well you stick to the foundation and understand the foundation and keep it ticking over. Now, this is what this, my YouTube channel is all about, so please go on there, go and have a look at the videos. They will help you get a much better understanding of the game and I'm gonna stop using my hands so much at the moment and keep them down here uh, so I can then work on the basic principles um, of presenting more effectively and stopping distracting you all as opposed to giving you the information. Hmm. I'll give that a go. And so that will be part of my training as I've mentioned. So. Thank you for listening. I hope you found that helpful. Any comments, please just uh, send them my way. Uh, go and subscribe onto the, uh, the YouTube channel, the Carl Watts Golf YouTube channel. Press the bell for more notifications. And we're putting videos out every day and we're creating systems that are gonna help you to understand the game, improve, and just enjoy the game more. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week.